Hello, I'm David Gibson again with Third Wednesday Magazine, a quarterly magazine of literature and the visual arts. Tonight we have a reading by Mark B. Hamilton. And Mark is an award-winning poet and scholar of pre-industrial American history. As a community activist, professor, research scholar, and advocate for First Nations, he has taught at Ball State University and Missouri Western State University for 20 years and is perhaps the only living person to have traced the entire Lewis and Clark expedition route on their timetable, traveling as they did by paddle and pack mule, a three-year, 8,000-mile journey. A Beautiful River was written from his journey, moving, rowing down the Ohio River. His work has been recognized by an Indiana Governor's Award, two National Endowment of the Arts, Indiana State, Visiting Artist Grants, a Literary Fellowship at UCross, and at Sitka Center for Art and Ecology, and Matthew Hansen Endowment for the Wilderness Studies. A letter of, of commendation from the Office of Vice President Al Gore and the inclusion of his research into the Folk Life Archives Library of Congress, among others. Mark considers himself an environmental new structuralist or echo structuralist working in forms to transform content, adapting from Eastern and Western traditions. For additional information on the author, you can view his website, Mark B. Hamilton, wordpress.com. And now, without further ado, here is Mark B. Hamilton. My intent as the author of these three Echo Poetry volumes was to confront our everyday contemporary environment, not as a classic American naturalist, as uh, perhaps John Muir with his ideas of spirituality and a cathedral of pristine wilderness, but as a person stepping out of his backyard and walking down the street and seeing what environment actually surrounded us and how that might affect us in uh, whatever situation we found ourselves. In my case, I took river journeys, uh, the first down the Ohio River in a 15-foot rowing dory, and then I continued up the Mississippi and the Missouri River in a kayak. The first volume I'll read from is rowing down the Missouri, I, excuse me, rowing down the Ohio River. The book is entitled Oyo, the Beautiful River. I'll start with a, a real nice little positive poem, but they do get negative as I get into more of the pollution and degraded environment of the Ohio River. A welcoming. Short Creek swells into a bay with a new depth of rain, a fresh enchanted world all its own. Within 200 yards we're amid geese, sedges, and meadow grasses. The breeze lulls with its metronome of blackbirds. And there are water bugs and the soft webbings of feet as I row upstream off the map into rural backyards then turn to float through the ponds and grasses again, carried by reflections, by the musings of the gods in the marsh. At midnight, bass begin to rise, pails and fins bristling like castanets, flapping against the hull in reckless turns, plankton, copepods, and water fleas, bursting right up into the stars. In contrast to poems of this natural sequence, uh, the next poems are after rowing through the city of Cincinnati and uh, dealing with the waste that's uh, part of the downriver city. It's entitled Out City. Asphalt factories hidden in the haze painted white and camouflaged inside their vapor. I'm surrounded by rainbows of oil, 
swirling at the confluence of the great Miami River, yawning with its brown and dirty yellow tongue, exhaling fumes from a city's sewage overflow, the storm waters spruing purulent songs even insects cannot hum. A cavern of webbed branches droops with roots in the soggy murk, sprung and rung above the lengthening stretch of mud stench. Unnamed things scatter across the surface, away from the bloated carcass of a cow that rocks, floating and swaying with blotches and humps in the refuse. And except for a mosquito revving its wings past my ear, I hesitate to even touch the oars to it. In a sequence from that storm effluent overflow, a poem titled The Death of Clowns. There is no humor in a, in a buck's head, bobbing expressionless in the backwater. The torn throat of a towboat throttle growling, nudging the bank. Nor in the afternoon heat, where a macabre cartoon of cowled monk waits in the bleachers, bluffing in the branches, the vultures crowded into a tree or hunched over a floating fuel sign that points to a hidden gas dock somewhere up the creek. There is no mirth or mercy in the glaze of afternoons, the reflections bending at their waists and cummerbunds, bald heads and red fleshy hoods, flopping to one side as they spread their bony pirate wings. For those are true weapons to tear the soft bellies of the dead. I row away to avoid the smell, but there is death to the left and death to the right, and more straight ahead on the flat wide river, dozens and dozens of evenly spaced fish floating belly up, in little whirlwinds of stench. For half a mile, the air is filled with decay. So at first, I think net fishermen must have created this banquet. But then I realize it is the fish kill from the city's overflowing sewage, diluting slowly down from the great Miami River. From the shade, they glide on wings with high limbs to prod and tug at the flesh, bracing their entire bodies in huge backward lunges of feathery tuggings. While others, tired by the competitive eating, are resting on perches as happily as spectators in the bleachers of a traveling circus. The spinning, leaping harlequins in baggy pants are heaped into piles like so many dead clowns. And a final poem from the Ohio collection titled A Strong Cup of Tea. Towboats rattle in the gloom of my fatigue. By evening, without a place to anchor, I'm worried, but think I'm going to make it to the next creek an anchorage where I'll feel safe for the night. As I approach, I'm ambushed by scavenger flies that bite and sting like drops of acid. The boat veers, I swat and slash with hands and towel, my legs, my neck and back. Infuriated, I want to kill them all and I'm getting good at it. Carcasses pile up. I'd rather leave and slink away from these flies, from this cattle smelling land, but it's dark and I'm tired, the river wide and the far shore uncertain. So I row up the broken brown water to a fallen cottonwood, drop the stern anchor and tie the bow to a limb. Inside my boat's canoe, I keep killing flies in handfuls, enough to brew the devil, a strong cup of tea.
As I moved out of the Ohio River, I went upstream on the Mississippi during November and December in a kayak. The volume I'm reading from is entitled Upstream, published by Finishing Line Press just this January 2024. It begins with two conventional Japanese structures of parting, of saying our goodbyes. The first titled Wet Sleeves. Carp gather into mats, thick with lips, red eyes rising through autumn leaves. Casting my doubts onto a mat, I roll the bones of obstacles, a worm squiggling in the shallows, my shoulders brushing the earthen banks where I imagine I'll be safe. I rummage through kindling, stoke coals below bubbling spices that ebb and flood, each day curling beyond the control of desire over its final stone. The second poem entitled Last Night. The Mississippi prowls and strains against the chain of its collar, a curving river funneling faster and faster, squeezed until it, until it curls back inside the bend. Uncertainties become my fears, hidden in the label, unhindered nature. I paddle with all my hope, all my breath. After three miles, I land, tucked into an arm of sand. It is as far as I could see from yesterday. An owl crosses the river. A hunter is out for deer. The water keeps curling past. I camp inside a sandy hook. The scent of autumn leaves in a wooden bushel basket. A few scenes as I traveled up the Mississippi. <clears throat> a mouse in camp. The autumn tunnels fill with the forest scent. A fire burns hot, banked up with sand against cottonwood roots bleached by the sun. The night becoming so clear, each star moves across the Mississippi by itself. A last cup of tea, a mouse nibbling half a pecan, its little crunchy face. All morning I paddle with mallards in shoal waters, so shallow and slick with silt, only a gnawed beaver stick warms, warns me off an invisible mud bar. A silo stands on the ridgeline the reflected clouds folding up and up. As I kayaked up the river, of course, I, I had to paddle through many cities. This poem is titled Alleyways of Return. Raccoons feel for eggs under a sleeping hen. The city rises from its nest of black barges. Between a river and a levee, sticks in the mud dry socks by the fire. Sparks roll in the wind, mixing with snow flurries, while I study the map, plotting three careful days. The city's orange glow grows distorted with the west wind, a tower bell tolls one chime, feathering off into a gust. I play cat and mouse, an edge between the barges, beneath the sag of crushing chains and the shore. Occasionally I get dead-ended by log jams or barges, high and dry, in the alleyways of return. Geese resting in the shallows leave webbed footprints in the mud where I can follow. 
A final poem from this selection titled St. Louis of the After. The acetylene torches touch a colder dark and spark steel plates into scars. I scrape past crevices, ghost through the narrow passages of alleyways between their rusted sides. Beneath slung cables and electrical wires, I'm a mallard hiding in open water, shoulders hunched, neck stretched out. Sometimes I can lift the kayak with my fists in the mud, humping through the shallows, moving through quiet spaces like some plastic mermaid man or half manatee, wending through a labyrinth of timbers and overhead cranes until I can use the rudder and paddle out again. Flocks of pigeons flapping over barges and low clouds, sweet with earth and grain. At the casino's parking lot near Paddlewheel McDonald's, I walk uphill and listen to voices under the arch, to vibrations of stainless steel in Spanish, French, and Osage. Towboats rattle up and towboats rattle down with coal between two tribal names. The city is listening to a fast tram whooshing over a bridge to Ferguson. The casino is sinking into splashes of pink neon. More barges glide by like huge amber beaver where I camp at East St. Louis, above the spirit mounds, the Milky Way, at Cahookia, along the river road. The third and final Echo Poetry volume is entitled Lake River Mountain. It's been published by Cornerstone Press, University of Wisconsin, also January of this year, 2024. This is an upstream journey by kayak from Washbourne, North Dakota, across the Great Plains to the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, ending at Dillon, Montana. It's an alternately structured volume uh, from the more traditional Western personal lyric to a more Eastern communal uh, linked verse ranga um, that I found interesting uh, to work with. The first poem, When I Was a Child. All the trees carried blue dresses. All my hurts curved and strung by roots and flowers in the breezes beneath a banyan tree. In the coolness of a soothing fountain, I would sit drifting in the mist on the steps of a bronze sculpture, its gnarl of dogs circling a man, green with muscle, snapping at his heart. A wounded stag, arrow pierced, gasped, above the flashing fountain, saddened by this whirl that manship had made of the sacrificed and of the freed. The fountain, cool and brimming with bronze and the splashing of green flowers. This is uh, the second one titled Surviving April on Sakakawea Lake is an example of the linked verse from the Japanese tradition. It basically alternates three lines, two lines, uh, approximating the haiku and then a more narrative release uh, of a longer two line stanza. Surviving April on Sakakawea Lake. 
How huge the wind and raw the dance of pelting ice, those bouncing beans of hail. Even songbirds hesitate, turkey calls and other little sounds scattering in the prairie grass. A flittering of finches into the bending straw of winter's fallen spaces, each settling out of sight. How these wicked winds do strengthen the wary, and yet frighten all my deep deaf hearts. Scrunched into one dry corner of the tent, two days are fair, five days foul. I hide in a nook, a small hook of cove, accepting whatever comfort remains. A woodless prairie, a clutch of coal under smoldering smoke, and the wild brant's wing, lifting my spirits from this blustery camp, from this huddled sight with vast rain trenching past. Wet and cold and gray, I circle words in a book of words, nothing more. A precious rock weighs down the tent, nearly floating away with me in it, reading the journals. Lewis and Clark had camped here with these same northwest winds, with fear, the descendant of fatigue. In the stillness, I learn not to be the target, nor the center of these tearing winds, not the origin to be altered. My emptiness widens into a ring of warmth that surrounds. How does this happen? Another shorter Ranga linked verse poem entitled Bitterroot Flowers. This is a poem that is toward the end of the collection as I actually arrive in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains near Dillon, Montana. Towing my way up has been the best kind of doing to climb those distant mountains. The cobblestone islands are homes to muskrats whispering in a language slightly familiar. At the headwaters, the locals cast for lunkers, seeking their secret pools. Strong currents undercutting the bank, the river equal to its melting mountain. In the cold, cutthroat, swim and clear blue ribbon waters, turning pink with sunset. Cattle low on both sides, Hoof prints crowding the river, the herd sleep slipping through narrow corner gates. My feet go splashing through the suburbs of Dillon, Montana, toward bitterroot flowers, past houses, a weir, the kayak sliding on the wet grass of a lawn where I linger. I believe I'll stop there with this reading uh, from these books that are available, certainly, online. I'll see what I can do here. Oyo, The Beautiful River, published by Shanti Arts in Brunswick, Maine. Uh, Upstream, again, published by Finish Line Press in Kentucky. And Lake River Mountain, published by Cornerstone Press, University of Wisconsin. Uh, all of these are echo poetry books that I hope people will enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark Hamilton, uh, for reading for us at Third Wednesday. I hope everyone enjoyed it as much as I do. Please join us again next time with another contributor poetry reading from Third Wednesday Magazine. I'm David Gibson. Good night.